Hi, I'm Marcus Conti, incidental journalist and entrepreneur. What else am I? Oh, plaintiff and Conti versus DSNY. So I, I want to talk about a subject that might not be uh, that sexy, but is very, very important for people to understand. Uh, you know, taxes. Let's talk about taxes now. The GOP is is uh, you know they all have you know hard dicks in Congress right now because they passed their their uh, GOP tax uh, bill, right? And, um, you know, this subject had me up all night. So I want to talk about, you know, let's just look at what, what exactly the tax cut was, right? So for most people, right, it, it, I'm going to keep it, I'm not going to get into the, the numbers because it's boring and everybody will go to sleep and who gives a shit, right? I just want to tell you uh, that you are being, you know, America's being screwed. And I'm going to show you exactly how. All right. I, again, I have. I, I, you could think that I'm just some jerk off that you know works, you know, has a webcam on on you know on the internet, but I I actually do have a you know background in in Wall Street and and uh, other stuff too, a lot of legal experience. So I just want to tell you what's what's going on here. So the the tax bracket. I'm looking at CNN right now. So. <laughs> You know, let's let's hope that at least they're putting up the correct numbers in this bill. Because I'm not going to go look at the bill anyway. All right, so the anybody who is in the twenty, the uh, twenty-two percent of Americans, anyone from between thirty-eight thousand dollars a year and eighty-two thousand dollars a year, that seems to be about the norm. You would go from twenty-five percent tax bracket down to twenty-two percent, right? So you would get a three percent savings, and it seems to be. That across the board as well. If you make less than thirty-eight thousand, you would go from fifteen uh, percent to twelve percent. So again, everybody below eighty grand a year gets a three percent uh, cut, right? And as you get higher up, uh, as you get higher up to thirty-five percent, uh, as you get up to the people that make over one hundred fifty grand, that starts to level off and then people over a million dollars or half a million actually pay two percent more but here's where it gets interesting so you think he's saving three percent oh shit trump's on our side you see i told you so i told you so he's making america great again america's getting great again look he slashed the taxes look at this shit holy cow right and then you go down a little more and, well, oh, shit, he doubles the standard deduction. You remember that? You know that deduction line on the fucking tax form, right? 12000 uh, from 6000 He doubled it to 12000 Holy shit. Oh, man, 6000 grand, six grand in my pocket, right? But then he eliminates the personal exemption, right, which is a $4,000 personal exemption. So that cancels itself out. So you're still, you're still around the 3% savings, right? But that's not the big deal, right? So, all right. So everybody is going to save three percent, right? You're gonna you're gonna save three percent on your money. So if you make thirty grand a year, you got extra, you know, three hundred dollars in your pocket, right? All right. So here's the big one. Here, here here's here's the big one, right? Then you scroll down. Who gets the biggest tax break? Now this is where this is where it. It matters, right? The they they the GOP they slash the corporate tax rate, right? This is where you're getting fucked, right? This is where everybody gets fucked. First of all, corporations are not people. Corporations are publicly held organizations for the public, right? People forget that it's a publicly traded company, right? But um, they're getting a tax break slash from thirty five percent to twenty one percent. Whoa! Wait a second. So they're getting, they're getting a fourteen percent break, and regular people are only getting a three percent break. How does that make sense? They're getting five times corporate 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 corporation corporations get five times the tax break than I'm getting. That's fucked up. I'm getting screwed, right? This just sounds like to me. I'm getting screwed. Shit. Goddamn motherfuckers. Guys stealing my fucking money again, right? All right, so, all right, so they, maybe a corporation should get the money, right? Let's, I want to pull up a, a, a pie chart of, uh, let, let, let's look at something. I'm going to explain a couple of things, but let's, let's, you know, let's look at a few things. This is called um, total spending in the course of a year, right? Now, let's look at this. 
Let's look at this very cool pie chart. Uh, it's cool. I, look at this shit. Now, this is the total amount of spending in 2017 proposed. Uh, this is, so it's it's a, a fairly fairly close, right? 4.2 trillion dollars with a T that the U.S. government spends on this stuff down here, right? You see. You know, the big orange one is Medicaid and health. They spend 28% of all spending goes there. 1.7, 1.1.7 trillion dollars. The military gets 15%. Social Security, unemployment, labor gets 1.3 trillion, right? So that's a huge, uh, a huge cut there. Then you see like food and agriculture, 138 billion dollars, right? So 1.2 trillion dollars. Who's going to pay for this? Who pays for this? You pay for it through taxes, right? That's how. That's how the government pays the, pays these bills. They pay it through through the tax money generated. But but how? But if all the money, you know, you say, well, quote, the, you know, the, the people are going to pay three percent less. So there's less money going into this this hole to pay for this total spending. But that's not really the bulk of the money. The bulk of the money, the bulk of the tax money generated in this country comes through corporations, and they just got a huge break. Now, I want to let's talk about let's talk about uh, what let's talk about 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 what is velocity of money, right? Velocity of money, right? This is something Chris Hedges had spoken about and uh it, it's a it's a well-known phenomenon it's not a theory right it's actual actual numbers i want to velocity of money is the rate at which people uh spend cash specifically it's how often each unit of currency uh such as the u.s dollar or euro is used to buy goods or services during a period of time right it is the turnover of the money supply right it's like you take the the money you have, you take it and you spend it, right? You spend it, you spend it, right? And um, the demand, this um, uh, this demand, right? This it generates production. So the more the the higher the velocity of money, the more production, the more money is flowing, the more money, the more the economy is stimulated. So what what is that? Why does that matter? Because look, if if people that make the average guy that makes 40 grand a year, right? 35, 40, 50 grand a year. His expenses are probably more than half of that, right? And he'll spend all of that money. He'll spend almost 100% of that money to, you know, take care of himself. Pay bills, pay rent, put gas in his car in New York, buy a Metro card, you know, buy some clothes. Maybe if he has some money, he'll eat good food instead of shit food for ten dollars. He'll eat something good for fifteen or twenty, right? So that's that's velocity of money. The the poor person or the what we now call object poverty in the United States, which is you know thirty grand, forty grand. You don't have any money to buy a house that's three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Those things are outrageous. You can't even those those, those days are gone. Right, they're totally gone. Right, so that's velocity of money. Someone that has that kind of money, right, that makes that amount of money spends almost 100%. Actually, more than 100% because they go into debt. Right, so they spend 110% of the money they make. Right, and that that stimulates production. But because people have less and less money, and there's more people with no money at all. The velocity of money goes down, right? Now you say, well, the money is still there. Look, the, mar the stock market's roaring. The stock market's up so high, it's unbelievable, right? But that's not that's that's an illusion. You know, I'll tell you why. When rich people have money, right? So, so say for example, let's take an example like Rachel Maddow, right, who makes seven or eight million dollars a year, right? And these are people who can't. Or let's take a, a Barack Obama, who who went into office with zero, and came out with a hundred million dollars. Right? How did he do that? So it's a politician. He's only supposed to make four hundred grand a year. Came out a hundred million dollars. Right? So these these folks, right? When you have that kind of money, right? When you have a lot of money. You you can't spend it. How many houses can you have? How many cars can you buy? How many how many pairs of you know different 
arrays of clothes and and trips can you take in the course of a year? You can't spend, you know, tens of millions of dollars on yourself. So what do you do? You take it out of the the real economy, and you put it in the bank, or you put it in a money market, or you put it in investment. Or most 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 uh, of the time, you do what's called corporate um, avoidance, avoision, <laughs> avoision. That's a word. That's a a real word. Corporate avoision, right? People do it too. People with a lot of money do it. So they park their money, right? And that money doesn't hit the real economy, right? So it it causes the it causes the velocity of money to go way down, right? It doesn't stimulate the economy. So the more tax breaks you give to the wealthy and the corporations, mostly the corporations, <clears throat> the velocity of money goes down because the theory that trickle down economics, right? That's bullshit, right? We know that's bullshit. The guy who invented that is Alan Greenspan, and on a, on his almost deathbed said it. It was a mistake. It didn't work. It doesn't work, right? That corporations don't reciprocate. Cor corporations have a a business plan of 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 hoarding the money and then passing it on to the tax, to passing it on to the shareholders. Now. You say, well, this is a publicly traded company. Yeah, but the public is cut out of that, right? All the all the holdings of most of these corporations are institutional holders at this point. People got wiped out in 08 and, and beyond, you know. So so the velocity of money is very, very critical. And here, here's another chart, uh, one more chart. This is a gross domestic product. Right? So here you see a very uh, interesting chart. And... You go all the way back to 1929. You see 1929 over there? 1929, that chart is way the hell up there. And all of a sudden, it comes crashing down, the crash of 1929. Remember the market crash? And it went from um, some some number there, 17, 17 point blah, blah, down to 5, right? So the, the gross domestic product got, got you know, got uh, quartered, <laughs> right? And then it, it, you, saw, you see a steady rise up into the 1980s, and then... You know the the great uh, economist uh, Ronald Reagan <laughs> and these jackoffs, right? Come in, and it leads all the way into the Clinton administration, 1990. And you see gross domestic products start to plunge. And then in 07 and 08, we saw the massive transfer of wealth when the when the banks froze up and the and the bailouts occurred. And uh, there was the, the the you know the 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 biggest transfer of wealth in in. Um, in economic, uh, uh, at least in recorded history, you see it. There it is, right? It crashes down, and and here we are. We have the gross domestic product is at, at an all-time low, and so so velocity of money sucks right now, right? It's it it's a drag on the economy, right? The economy is being dragged down, right? You know, and who said all this stuff? Remember? Oh, let's let's go backwards in time. Let's go. Let's 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 trigger a memory. You remember? You remember who said it? Who said it? Who said the velocity of money? And who talked about that that that, that you know corporations are using all these these tax you know tax tricks to rip us off? They're stashing their money in the Cayman Islands and. You know, and where else? See, is the you know, there's more than just the Cayman Islands as a tax haven, right? See, the other thing about corporations, who said it though? It was Bernie Sanders, remember? Remember Bernie Sanders? Oh damn, oh, it's gonna make me cry. Oh Bernie, oh Bernie, we miss you, Bernie. Oh Bernie. <laughs> but the the tax havens that Bernie Sanders was talking about are real. See, corporations. Even though they got slashed from 35% down to 20%, most of them don't pay tax anyway. They use co these corporate uh, avoidance tactics to stash their money in the Cayman Islands. Luxembourg, that's another big one where they, they do it. Amazon got busted doing that. But it's all legal. 
It's all perfectly legal. So you see, when we have we put on our suits and ties, everything's legal. We we get the politicians to sign off on everything's legal. See, this is all legal. This is this is legalized uh, tax evasion, right? We've we've already figured it out. So, but but you, oh shit, what, what, could you do you do your taxes at the end of the year? Do you do you withhold all your money and then you tell the government how much money that uh, you owe them? No, no, they take it from you and you got to fight them to get it back, right? But corporations, it's different. They just hold their money. Money. They're in charge. They're in charge of their own money, and then they decide what they're going to pay. And they, most of them, declare a tax uh, uh, burden of about 22 or 23 percent. Now, you have to put into perspective the amount of money, right? When we're talking about, you know, 95 percent of the population getting a three percent cut, but here's where the money is. Here's where the the Big, 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 big dollars can wipe out this trillion dollar debt, right? And and you know you say, well, well, people can't, you know, you, right? So the the money is in the corporatization. That's where the that's where the that's where people. So you don't we don't need tax reform in this country. We don't need tax reform. What we need is tax enforcement, right? Because if you keep letting corporations. Right, the GOP thinks it's a big victory, and you know, you know, and to all the people that voted for Trump, thinking make make America great again, this is not making America great again. This is a this is a making America weak, and 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 uh, debilitated by giving these jack off corporations that are supposed to be working on our behalf, working on their own behalf, right? Because they're not they're not they're not paying tax anyway. And you have to look at the numbers. You have to look at, for example, you know, corporations. There's there's tens of thousands of publicly traded corporations in, in the United States, and the tax tax burdens are you know between a billion and ten, or you know sometimes like some of these large banks. You know, it could, the the tax bur the the um, the tax burden can be fifteen or twenty billion dollars on the record, right? That's not including what they adv what they steal and they don't declare and you know they got teams of lawyers that figure all this stuff out and and no one really knows how much money Apple makes or how, how much money Apple owes or how much money JP Morgan generates and how much nobody really knows because there's no you know you, you listen to guys like Ted Cruz deregulate uh, throw the IRS in the fucking garbage pile we don't need this shit we don't need regulation you do need it you need to be you need to to, to to say to corporations, fuck you, your tax bracket is now 25% and we want our fucking money. Give us our fucking money, right? You could you could do whatever you want. We don't we're not telling you how to we're not regulating you, we're not telling you how to run your business. But if you make that money on US soil or foreign soil, if you're a if you're a US company and you make that kind of money and you're publicly traded, we want our fucking tax money. Right? That's what you tell them. That's the solution to the problem. Because even if you cut it from 35 to 21, they're still not going to reciprocate. They're not going to. They're just going to take that money, and all the executive branches and all the all the big shots just going to make more money. They're not going to. They, they're going to instead of making 52 million dollars CEO, he's going to make 82 million dollars. And they don't. They don't. It doesn't trickle down. Is the point? And it, you know. So so you see the. The, the discrepancy in, in um, you know, the uh, income inequality is, is now going to spread even further with, with bullshit like this. So what is the answer? The answer is you've got to get, it's, it's a, we have a political problem in this country that the, that, that, that all the, all the politicians become careerists, right? They all become smooth talking salesmen and they, they got all their talking points and all full of shit, right? They're all bu fucking full of shit, and people go along with it, right? They go along with it. They're just like, eh, you know, well, I don't know, you know, just go because and everybody's overworked. They work twenty four seven. Nobody knows, nobody's following any of this stuff, right? And I would say, you know, I remember George Webb. I became a fan of George Webb, and he said, you know, the big move covers the little move. The big move covers the middle, little move. And what does that mean? It's like you, you, you turn on CNN, not, not that I do anymore, but if you do, you'll hear, you'll hear Russia, Russia, Russia 24-7. They're promoting a false narrative, a story that 
has no basis in fact or evidence or law or anything that it's just a it's a it's a propaganda scheme to take your mind off the ball right and then they'll say okay now the democrats are going to come out and say oh well we didn't vote for this bill we didn't vote for this bill fuck trump we didn't vote for the bill no but you're what's called controlled opposition right we we know what you're doing your donors it's the same donors it doesn't matter what was the number the number i saw they, they published it they published a number. It was uh, how many votes to how many votes? I don't know. I think it was like, oh yeah, two two. What is it? Oh, two twenty seven to two hundred three. Right. So two hundred twenty seven House of Representatives voted for it, and two hundred three voted against it. So the Democrats are like, oh, see, we didn't vote for it. But again, you knew that the you knew that the bill was going to get passed. You knew it because you're a, you're a minority. You're fucking morons, right? You got you you you. You stuck Bernie Sanders in the back, and this is what you get, right? It's not what you get. It's what the American people get, right? The American, you screw, by you screwing Bernie Sanders, the people's choice for president of the United States, right? You saw millions of people energized, love. People wanted to, 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 to fix this problem. That was, that was Bernie's point, is that, is that you, have to, you have to fix the corporate stealing and the looting of our country, right? Trump, he doesn't know it. He doesn't know that. He doesn't care. He doesn't fucking jerk off, right? right? But this is what you get because you stuck Bernie Sanders in the back, right? You. This is what. This is what the corruption leads to. It leads to. It leads to a guy in the White House who maybe he means well, maybe he doesn't. Who the hell knows? He's not the, he's not the the sharpest nail in the box, and and it, clearly he let the Republicans run all over him with this. This does not help. It doesn't help the real economy. It doesn't help people, and the Democratic Party, you stole victory, you stole defeat out of the jaws of victory, right out of the jaws of victory, right? We had him, we had. We had the candidate. We had Bernie Sanders. We had him. He was. We, he was. We had him on our shoulders, and we were carrying him to the finish line. And you guys stuck a knife in our back. You, 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 you fucking you took a hammer out and banged at our knees, right? Right? It's your fault. It's not Russia. What are you gonna make up fucking Russia? There's no evidence of any Russian collusion. Guys are selling. You know. If if Hillary Clinton would have won, nothing would none of this would have changed. We would have the same same leaks out of, out of the top. You know, this whole this whole business is like it's like trying to warm your house for for regular people. It's like trying to warm your house and you got all the windows open. That's what accumulating wealth is like for us, right? You're trying to accumulate wealth, but all the windows are open. It just as it comes in, it just flies right out. You can't stay warm, right? You can't keep yourself uh, and 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 this is this is how you you have to close the windows, right? These are the windows that we have to close the corporate corporate loopholes in the taxation, so that so that that money stays in the economy, so that regular people have a chance to uh, enjoy that money and that that taxation, where their lives get easier and their tax burden gets lesser and then that money is reinvested into the economy in terms of the things that we don't even have anymore like you know programs for the arts remember that so anyway that's my thoughts on um, taxes and uh, thank you for watching